Hello everyone, I'm so so excited to be starting this video because it is my first ever reread of A Court of the Thorns and Roses for Maddie and I's Aquatar along our Our live show was on Saturday and I decided I want to vlog my thoughts as I read this book like live in the action and kind of like read a little bit give an update and make this a very thorough spoiler filled reading vlog for each of the books as we do our live shows each month leading up to the new book a court of silver flames he's barking at me because he's in there because he needs to chill out it's okay just relax so anyways, yes, I'm going to be like thoroughly telling my thoughts and feelings and I am probably avoid this vlog if you, haven't, if you haven't read the whole series because I want to talk about like things of foreshadowing and stuff like that. So yeah, this is just the start. I let us get into my thoughts on A Court of Thorns Roses, see how much I can read tonight and uh, I'm sorry that my dog is barking but he wants attention and so I'm going to go give it to you. Okay, just wanted to give a quick update before I go to bed. I read the first 50 pages today, which is not too bad. I only started reading like pretty late, so I didn't think I was going to get that far. But from what I recall, okay, so what has happened so far in the book is that Vera starts out, she's hunting in the woods, and she kills the wolf. And something that surprised me is I forgot that she was pretty aware that it was a fairy. Like, she's pretty much like sees that he has some sort of awareness and she's like well i'm gonna kill him anyways because fairies suck and i need the food and i don't know can you blame her i mean like i guess you kind of can once you learn that like the fae are like normal but like she was like well i'm hungry so and then like the fact that she uses the ash arrow like she totally knows that it's a fae but she's just kind of like pretending that she doesn't and then Oh, we also got a mention of the dresser, which is like the um, dresser with the different drawers having a different design for each of them. And hers has the night sky, which we learn later is a vision that Reese sends her. Um, so that was cool. Okay, what else did stood out to me? So then they're like in the market and... What's interesting is like there's these children of the blessed which like believe that the fae are like good and they like send people over there as sacrifices I guess but they never come back into the story so I guess that they were just there as like a way to show that maybe the fae aren't that bad um what else did I pick up on oh and then like I just think it's funny when like Tamlin comes like roaring into the house and he's like you killed my friend and then he's like you have to come with me but we know that he like kind of really didn't even care that much because he needed someone to like break the curse like I guess he was kind of mad but like they also needed someone to break the curse you know so I don't know I'm, it's interesting to see like how their relationship will play out I remember when I first read this book I read it in like two days like I couldn't put it down so good oh another thing I remembered Farrah's family is literally so freaking awful to her they suck Nessa's a bitch Elaine is just like kind of like painted as very unaware and their father like really just sucks so everyone in her family sucks and then when she's leaving with Tamlin he's like if you managed to escape don't ever come back because you're too good for us like that's kind of when you know that you fucked up in life if your dad says that to you you know like don't come back not because we don't want you here but because you shouldn't be burdened by us it's crazy crazy so now tamlin has just taken her and they are about to arrive on the estate and that is where i'm closing the book today i think an update every 50 pages or so would be like a good pace for this vlog because i feel like enough happens in 50 pages that like i can talk about more specific things but not have it be like every page that i'm like picking up on something you know so now it's late and i really want to go to sleep so that is all for now hello so it's now thursday october 22nd i think our live show was on saturday in two days I got up to page 100 tonight. I was going to read up to 150 and then I just kept getting distracted because my new obsession is skincare TikTok and I stopped reading and just watched skincare TikToks. So yeah, so I got to haul it these next two days. I mean, I kind of wanted to finish this by tomorrow, which is 300 pages of reading after a full day of work. Maybe like 150, 150. I don't know. We'll see. 
Anyways, still really loving my reread. It's very interesting. So I'm now I'm on page 100 and she's just like kind of discovering the estate and like trying to figure out everything that's going on. Um, one of the things I'm noticing about her character is that she's so focused on survival. We don't really know the Feyre that we know at the end of the series. I feel like her life is just so focus on survival that she tends to repress a lot of parts of her personality like she'll start to think about the colors and painting and all that and she's like no I can't think about that like I need to think about escaping I need to think about taking care of my family I need to th think of this think of that and and so it's really interesting because I feel like we don't actually get a feel for like the feisty pharaoh that we know like she's just so worn down by life that it like her whole personality is focused on survival. So it's really interesting to kind of like see her get acquainted to that. And also like we get to meet some of the other fairies. Like, so we had our first mention of the surreal and also our first mention of some other fairy creatures like the bog. And that's pretty much all that I got to. She was trying to like befriend Lucian to be like, hey, like maybe you can like let Tamlin let me out of here. And Lucian's like, don't try. I don't have any sway and then we also get the first mention of like you know like she's noticing something is weird because there she's like why i killed their friend and now they're just like letting me live here in peace and obviously they're letting her live there in peace because he needs to fall in love with the human and the human needs to fall in love with him to break amaratha's curse but obviously like things aren't going well because she's like suspicious which like she should be and i'm still noticing that like through the course of this book series like obviously yes by the end we like Tamlin and then like you don't like Tamlin again in accord to Miss Fury and I think that his like asshole like tendencies are always there even if he's like trying to act in the name of the curse like I don't think it fully like accounts for how much of a prick he is but I think that like Feyre falls in love with him and it's kind of like blinded to his tendencies and then you know everything happens in Aftermath so I'm really interested to see like how I feel when Reese comes into the picture how it feels like with their interactions in the mountain versus like with Feyre's interactions when she's falling in love with Tamlin. I don't know what is going on with me tonight, but I just like could not read a lot. Like I just couldn't focus. I think it's because Gavin was just being rambunctious and I couldn't just sit down and read. So like tomorrow really needs to be focused on reading this. And of course I want to update every 50 pages. That's the goal. So only two updates so far because I don't have that many pages that I read. So there's a lot of night sky imagery that keeps coming up in Feyre's parts, um, which obviously you don't really take note of when you I have it, when you are just reading this for the first time. Like page 90, it's like she's trying to think of like peaceful things so that she can avoid looking at the bog. And like the first thought that comes to her mind of peaceful things is a starry, unclouded night sky, peaceful and glittering and endless. And there's a lot of night sky imagery that comes up a lot of the times when. Feyre is like thinking about things um that's a, so much foreshadowing that you just don't catch the first time so it's really really fun going back and rereading I love love rereading books and I don't get to do it that often because I'm always like focused on new stuff so it's just so much fun and I love this series so much and I'm just so excited about Akutar along I think we're gonna have such a fun time at the live show so yeah tomorrow my butt is reading more of this book I need to say off TikTok but you know, if my skin looks more glowy in upcoming days, maybe it's because I was on skincare and TikTok. So, who knows? All right, I'm gonna go to bed now. Good night. Hello, so it's Friday, October 23rd now, and I got home from work and I read the next 50 pages of Aquatar. So now I'm on page 155 and things are good. The tension is starting to melt between Feyre and Tamlin, so I feel like their romance is gonna heat up soon. And we got the surreal, which like I love the surreal, and he has that like cryptic warning where he's like, stay with the High Lord, and she thinks it means Tamlin, but it's actually Reese. And so, you know, like it's pretty much just still a lot of world building, so I don't have too much to comment on that because I know this world pretty well since I've read the whole series. But um, yeah, just besides that, like I'm starting to see some tender moments between them and it's weird knowing that she doesn't end up with him and having to read her love story with him again when I obviously much prefer Reese. So it's interesting. Um, I'm gonna take a nap now and then I'm going to continue on and read the next 
50 pages. We'll see how far I get tonight. I'm not gonna be like ambitious and be like, I'm gonna finish this tonight, but I do need to finish it by 6 p.m. tomorrow when our live show is and I'm almost halfway done. But I mean, it's reading really fast because this is a book I love and I'm really excited to be rereading a book. Like I said, I definitely don't reread as much as I should. So there we go. That's my update for now. Hello, it's now Saturday morning and I am continuing to read A Court of Thorns and Roses. Our live show is tonight, so I really need to pick up the pace. I just did my morning skincare routine because I'm revamping my skincare routine. I'm still waiting for a few products to come in and I'm trying to figure out like the best way to add things into my routine, but I'm obsessed with watching skincare YouTube and all the skincare. Oh my God. So cute. Let's take a look at him. Hold on. Hi, Gavin. Did you just wake up from a nappy? You should probably go outside, right? Okay. Mommy will get dressed and then we can go outside. Okay. Oh, he's so cute. I'm obsessed with him. I'm obsessed with you. I'm obsessed with you. Oh, say hi to the camera. Gavin's saying hi to YouTube. Okay, so the next 50 pages that I read, things started to get interesting and I just freaking, I'm like super into this book now because we kind of got past the world building point and I've just kind of noticed now that Feyre doesn't have to focus on survival so much, like she's actually becoming like more of a personality. So when I ended last night, it was like the fairy had come, the had gotten his wings ripped off and like Feyre comforted him while he died and then that's when she like realized that she was actually sorry for killing Andras. And then one of the things that I noticed that like where I started to see Feyre's personality coming through is she um, teased Tamlin and like that's the first time she like made a feisty joke and we all know Feyre is like super feisty. Another thing that I noticed is there's a lot a lot of starlight imagery compared to Feyre. Um, so like Tamlin takes her and Lucien to the Glen and they go swimming in the pool of starlight. So again, that's like another connection of Feyre to the starlight and the night imagery. Okay, what else did I take that And I've been taking like lots of notes in my book. So it's been like really fun to like annotate this way. Another quote is like, I'd had enough of that lately, enough of that girl encased in ice and bitterness. Um, so again, we like see her personality fall and we see more of her personality coming out to play and we're getting to know Feyre like better now that she like can be herself and she's not focused on taking care of her family and only surviving. Um, and then, okay, there was another moment um, where she's talking to Lucien about like the surreal and how he kind of like sent her out into danger to face the surreal and he like basically apologized and then gave her the hunting knife and I highlighted that because it's kind of like the beginning of their friendship that we know goes throughout the whole series. Um, and then she gets to go to the gallery and she gets to see the paintings and again this is something that Feyre can finally focus on herself and how much she loves painting. Um, and then she finally gets to begin to paint and she's just painting, painting, painting. Um, so again, like it's just nice to see her like coming into herself. I just think that's really good character development. When I first read this, I was so focused on like the romance and wanting to see where it was gonna go that I didn't really pay attention to Feyre's character development, like obviously subconsciously, but now I'm like consciously looking for it because I know where her personality ends up. And I think it's really interesting that I think my second read round, more so what is resonating with me is Feyre's character growth throughout this from the beginning when she was only like hunting and focusing on taking care of her family um, to like now like being able to come into herself a little bit versus like her relationship with Tamlin. Um, and then she has like this bad day where she's basically like sad because her family like barely remembers her and she just feels like um, like they kind of like forgot about her and no one tried to come after her, um, which is it's sad. Like I think Fairy's relationship with her family is very sad. And then the uh, next quote that I underlined on page 171 is, I stalked the nearest rose bush and ripped off a rose, my finger tearing on the thorns. And I thought that's probably where like a quart of thorns and roses came from. So I highlighted that. So I'd like to look for that. Okay. And then we see like her relationship with Tamlin developing, like they're getting more comfortable around each other. But again, like there's some things that are very subtle that I'm noticing now that I know that how Tamlin's character goes that like 
bothers me. But firstly, firstly we have Cal and Mai when Feyre is drawn out, right? So it's like she hears the drums and she says that like she feels like a string is tying her and connecting her to the hills, which we know is the mating bond with Reese, or like the beginning of the, like it's not snapped into place yet, but like that pull, and like the voice of the drums whispering, go, go see. And then she goes Calamine, she's cornered by like these three other fairies, and Rysan comes up to her, Rysan, Rysan, I can never remember, and is like, there you are, I've been looking for you. That line just gets me every time because he has known about this like, human that he's connected to and he's never been able to like find her or he's always just thought it's going to be pleasant visions and but then he like finally found her. like you don't know the song is significant until later but reading it the first time it's just like uh. and then she goes like and then she thinks that he's the most beautiful man she's ever seen and like i just love their romance so much and like <laughs> it just kills me and then she's describing rysan and like obviously he's super hot and then he's like She's describing him as if he's been molded from the night itself, as you know, we know he's the high lord of the night court. What else? Okay. And then like they have their little conversation and that's kind of it. And then Helena happens and you know, the ritual is for Tamlin to have like wild sex, animalistic sex to like redo the land. And then he finds Feyre in the house because she goes to get like a midnight snack. Oh, after Lucian like rushes her home because he's like, well, what the heck are you doing here? Like, <laughs> and then he's like being all like weird and like territorial and he's like, oh, like it, I searched for you, but it made me pick another. And then he's like, oh, but I would have been gentle with you. And then he bit her. And honestly, like I'm not a fan of Tamlin, but this scene I still think is written very spicily. Okay, it's written very spicily. And I'm not gonna deny that fact. Miss Sarah J. Mass knows what she's doing with the sexual tension. And then the next thing, so like more of like her relationship is developing with Tamlin, but I don't find myself highlighting those parts because I kind of like am not drawn to that part of the story because I kind of know how it ends. Um, another thing that I noted a quote for her character development is like, and I dare say that some kind of light had crept into my eyes. My eyes, not my mother's eyes or Nesta's eyes, mine. Because she's always comparing herself to her family. That's kind of like the lens that she sees herself through, is like protecting her family, doing everything for her family. And now she's finally, like we finally see her coming into her own self. And there's a bunch of quotes. Anytime I see something like that, I highlight it because I think it's important. Okay. And then here's something that like a subtle thing that I maybe didn't pick up on the first time because I was just so curious about the romance that um and like obviously we don't know fair's full character development for reading this for the first time but it says blah blah, blah her and Tamlin are having a conversation he goes i don't want you to live somewhere else i want you here where i can look after you where i can come home and know that you're here painting and safe so like Tamlin obviously wants to be a caretaker and just take care of someone but as Feyre comes into herself, like, and even before that, like, she's always been the caretaker. She's always been the type to, like, go, like, out in the woods and hunt and, like, put herself in dangerous risk. Like, she's not someone to sit around and be docile. And so, like, from this, we can kind of tell that, like, Tamlin and Feyre are probably not <laughs> going to work out because Tamlin just wants to make sure that she's safe and won't let her explore this, the side of her because he's so, like, kind of overbearing in that way. So um, I definitely think that this is like a subtle quote that if you didn't know how their relationship was going to go, you would have been like, oh, like that's nice. He wants her safe. But then knowing what we know later on in the series, you can kind of see how it starts to portray that they're not meant for one another. Also, sorry, Gavin is playing with a bone in the background and it's noisy. Okay, so now I'm on page 208 and I need to get for my next clip I'll probably stop at 260 and then I will have three more. So I'm, I'm halfway through right now. So I'm gonna go and take Gavin out for a bit and try to reach straight through to six o'clock because now I have four hours to finish 200 pages. Can, I mean, if I don't get like the very end, we just like won't tell anyone. We just won't tell anyone, but. But, 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 I think like I'm getting to the parts that are like really drawing me in. As you can see, I've talked a lot more in this clip than I have in the other ones because I think I have more to say now because it's picking up and it's getting to be more interesting. So I'm excited. I'm gonna take Gavin out. I've pretty much done everything that I need to do for the day chore wise so I can just chill. And yeah, I'm gonna get dressed because I still have my skincare. Okay, you are not going to eat the dust jacket of this book, please. 
But yeah, I'm overall really just enjoying this reread, so I'll be back with more thoughts later. Hello, I'm at the next check-in now. So I'm at page 254, and I feel like this, these 50 pages went really a lot faster than the other parts of the book because I'm getting so, so into it. Like, it's getting so good. Um, and now we're about to get to the part under the mountain, which is like the best part of the book, I think. So we get to the part of, um, like, these last 50 pages has mostly been like Feyre and Tamlin's relationship developing. And I do have to say, um, upon rereading it, it definitely feels like the relationship wasn't rushed per se, but it definitely was kind of like they got together and then she like just left. And it's interesting because Feyre mentions that the serial is like stay with the High Lord, which like we know I think kind of was like, supposed to mean Reese, but she ends up like going back to her family and she sees that her family is like very, very wealthy, very well taken care of. And you know, they like get together, but I felt like their relationship is so underwhelming knowing the deep like emotions that go into her relationship with Reese. So it's it's very interesting because it the Tamlin and Feyre's relationship seems very like surface level. Like, you know, he was the first person to take care of her and to like have have that kind of like be able to make her express herself and make her like safe and cared for and it, not, it was what she needed at that time but not like necessarily what she needs like when she's able to become her whole person but like not everything that Tamlin does is bad like there's some genuinely sweet moments and I think we kind of forget those as we go on with the story and he kind of becomes more of an asshole um and obviously Tamlin like cares for Feyre too because he she brings out some things in him that he kind of forgot in like those 50 years that he or 49 years that he's been just like chilling on his estate not really trying to break out of the curse oh like the night court sends like that head on a spike i forgot about that as like a gift and you know we kind of know that's like amarantha pulling the strings for reese um Oh, and then one thing that I highlighted that I know is of interest, it's talking about how the Blight took out two dozen of the Winter Court's younglings and like how the magic burned, it burned through their magic and broke apart their minds. So like we know that that's Reese because he has the magic that can like just tear minds apart. And like later on, it's kind of like alluded to that that's something that Amarantha made him do that was like one of the like worst things for him. And like then we go into that scene where Reese pays a visit to the spring court and he's like you know very much so like act like obviously like him and Tamlin have bad blood right but he's very much so like pretending to be this person to serve Amarantha to kind of like save his people and like you know he's like kind of like also being an asshole to Feyre so that she will leave this dangerous situation um and one of the more interesting things that we learned here, like they called him Amarantha's whore and he just kind of like takes it because he takes on that title as we know later on to like protect his people. Then Tamlin is like, I'm sending you home. And then they have sex and then he confesses his love for Feyre. But Feyre was like, um, there was this quote that like as he was saying it, like she didn't want to say it back because of what he had to face because he might not find him find her again despite his promise and because beneath it all he was immortal and she was mortal and that she didn't want to be a burden to him but it's like funny because if she had said i love you back i'm pretty sure that would have done like something for the curse i don't remember the specifics of it because i haven't gotten to under the mountain yet but now she's back at her house and her sisters are like all super rich now and they're like oh like you're back you inherited our aunt's fortune cool so yeah, so that's where I'm at. It's 3.30, no, it's probably like, it's 3.38. So I have two hours to read 150 pages. So we're just gonna keep chugging along and not putting this book down, only putting this book down to take these clips. And I will see you when I get to page 300. Rereading this book has just reminded me how much I love Sarah J Mass and Sarah J Mass's writing. Like, I don't really get bored rereading her books even though I know what's going to happen because there's so much more layers that you can pick up on and I think like analyzing this book upon a reread has been really fun so far and I'm excited to continue and then have our live show tonight in two hours for which I need to finish the book. I can do it. I believe in myself. I'm going to be strong. It's now 4.15 and I read the next 50 pages. 
so we just got to win. Feyre is under the mountain and she agrees to and read those terms to do the trials or answer the riddle. And so basically like she had been sent home and um, I thought what's really interesting is when she's home, her and Nesta kind of connect. And I do think that Nesta is one of the most interesting characters in this series, just because she's so bitter, but she really like cares deeply. And like they have this interesting conversation um, where basically Pharaoh's like, why were you a bitch to me? And she's like, I hate our father, but like I always knew you could go get more money. And I wanted to see if like, if you couldn't, if our father would actually you know, do something to take care of us. I don't think she's right, but I think she's very layered and interesting because she has all this anger and bitterness, but I think it like conceals a lot of feeling, like a lot of deep feeling. And I also think it's very interesting from the beginning because as we know, things happen with her throughout the series that the glamour didn't work on her. So I wonder like what exactly that means overall. Um, but I just thought that they like really connected and like had like a sweet moment and then like Elaine is just like this happy little ball of sunshine everyone loves. Um, so I did like that she got to see her family and kind of like make a little bit of amends because they were treating her so so poorly in the beginning. And so yeah, so now she's back under the mountain. She learns about the terms of the curse and now she's like about to start the trials. Hi Gavin. Hi. So I think it will be really good reading. We're 4.15. We are an hour and 45 minutes out from the live show and I have about 100 pages left. I think it can definitely be done. I just can't get distracted. So that's all I have to say on these 50 pages and I'll check in, in the next 50 pages and then I'll check in after I finish. It's 5.30 and I have about 50 pages left. I don't think I'm actually going to finish the book before the live show but I mean I'll finish it like pretty quickly within, you know, like, do the live show. I mean, I know what happens at the end, so not a big deal, but, like, don't tell anyone. I didn't finish it super on time, but I'm close enough. I have enough to discuss. Okay, so what happened in the last 50 pages? She's under the mountain. Oh, she makes the park in with Reese. Amarantha wanted to know Feyre's name, and Feyre wasn't going to give it, and then she started torturing Lucian, and because of that, then Feyre gave up her name. And so, like, that's a really touching moment between Lucien and Feyre, and Lucien comes to heal Feyre's nose. Then, after the first task, which is just so badass with the Midingarn worm, which reminds me of the Alaskan bullworm from SpongeBob, like, that's all I can picture in my head. <laughs> when I think of that worm. So she kills a worm by setting a trap for it and it impales itself on the bones. And she's basically like a whole badass, but her like left arm is just like out and about and no one's coming to heal her. Like she might die of an infection and then Reese comes and makes the bargain. And he's like, I want you to come to the night court two months, two weeks out of um, every month. And she's like, um, no, I'm not making that bargain with you. And then he's talking to her and she kind of realizes that she's out of options. So she's like, fine, like, I'll give you a week. And so she has this bargain and then she gets the tattoo with like the, the eye on the palm of her hand and like the cool tattoo. Like, I just like love the tattoo imagery. Like in all of Sarah J. Mass's books actually have like tattoo stuff involved in them. And I'm like, I should get a tattoo. Anyways, side note, that's a tangent. I don't have time for tangents. So I have to talk really quickly. So then now they're in there and like you can just like I can tell now because I know Reese's story that like he's trying to do what he can to help under the guise that he still has to act like evil and like Amarantha's a lackey so it's very interesting to see his character that way and I was also thinking of Lucia because Pharaoh was like you didn't come and Lucian is like why didn't you think I wouldn't come like you you helped me and she's like yeah but like I'm human you don't understand like how fast I could die like you would have come too late essentially so I mean like just all the character interactions are like very in depth and detailed like I don't know it's just it's just so like it just feels so fleshed out um but the way these characters act so okay so now, um, then Reese comes and it's like the whole part where he's painting her body every night, making her drink the wine while she like dances and does stuff. And like, that's kind of just like part of the act. And it's like a little, a little like sus. Um, 
but that's kind of part of the act. Where I am, we're up to the second task. So let's see uh, how fastly I can read in the next half hour. Absolutely not, are you alone? No. He's trying to eat my book. The audacity. You are not allowed to eat paper. Yeah, eat your bone. Okay, let's do it. Hello everyone, it's now the next day, which is Sunday, October 25th, and I finished A Court of Thorns and Roses after we had our live show last night, and we were talking for almost two hours. We had so many good discussions, and it was just really, really fun to discuss a book really in depth like that. I sleeping. Um, I just like really had so much fun on the live show and i'm so excited for the future ones because there's even more to discuss i feel like we really got to get in depth into the nitty gritty but i'm here to tell you my thoughts on the last 50 pages so last time i stopped at like 350 i think so let's see what notes i have okay so they had the bargain i can't remember if like the bargain okay and then lucine is like did you think i wouldn't come and to save you and fair was like i was dying like you don't no, the like human lifespan and Lucy was like oh like I couldn't walk and then like we see like I noticed like flickers of Reese's real personality shining through um like the fact that like Vera talked about his court falling and he like is sad about it and like she felt it deep inside so like there's also a lot of like the mating bond coming through but Vera thinks it's like the tattoo on her hand but it's like I think it's kind of both I can't remember but anyways so we have that and then Oh, like, Reese is doing the whole, like, drugging her and bringing her out to play at night or whatever. And I guess he was doing it to get a rise out of Tamlin. I said in the live show that I didn't feel like it was totally justified. Because, you know, Reese kind of, like, operates on this, like, lesser of two evils scale for what he's doing. Um, but I did kind of realize, like, because I didn't finish the book completely before I spoke in the live show. That, like it is kind of explained in this book like a little bit that he was doing it more so to get a rise out of Tamlin so that he would like just break and kill Amarantha so like I kind of I kind of get it more now um but like if I hadn't read that line if I had read that line before the live show I probably wouldn't have been all like saying it was like so super unjustified I still think it's kind of like one of the things that Reese does that's like less justified out of all of his actions but you know he's in between a rock and a hard place and then okay so she's in the second trial and she can't read so she can't solve the riddle and it just so happens that i think amarantha was taunting her with riddles because of um because she couldn't solve like amarantha's riddle so she can't even read and uh, of course we get reese helping her like showing her like which lever to pull and lucine's on the other side about to get squished with both of them because you know, it's punch her both of them. And then we have the scene where Reese licks away her tears and she's like, what are you doing? You just licked my tears off my face. And Reese is like, you didn't quite hate it because <laughs> you can feel her feelings. And it's just like the tension between them is still like, my second read around, I definitely don't despise Reese as much. I'm definitely catching up on more of like the subtle chemistry between them. And like the fact that he's licking her tears to kind of just like have some sort of emotion to stop her from shattering it because she was like about to like have a mental breakdown essentially. Ugh, I'm, just, I'm just so ready to read a Christmas of you. You have a, no idea like the experience is just going to be amazing. Okay, so then, oh my god, so then it's like when she's just sitting in the cell all sad, she gets the, she stared at the ceiling long enough and became a vast expense of the starry night and it became a small important thing that blew away in the wind and then she like gets the music and she doesn't know who's sending it but of course later we find out that it's Reese that's sending it and like these small little moments just make my heart burst because Tamlin does not do these types of things for Feyre and I really feel like in the under the mountain like obviously Tamlin is stuck in a hard place but he kind of does absolutely nothing to try and help Feyre and maybe by doing nothing he's thinking that he's doing the most but Reese definitely did more to help Feyre under the mountain than Tamlin did. So and just another example of like the comparison between the two um, and I really feel like 
Feyre and Tamlin's relationship was rushed and Feyre kind of loves Tamlin so much because and she does kind of like have this thought process in A Corpus and Fury, but he's the first person to show her any sort of affection, right? Like she lived with this cold and brutal family that didn't really care about her. And Tamlin shows her safety and she finally knows like enough happiness to be able to express herself and become an individual. So of course she's kind of latching on to that. Um, but it's not like a true like personality match almost. So it's really interesting. Um, that develops between the two and I, I can definitely see that in this book and the fact that their relationship did feel very rushed um, in comparison especially because I know the way that Sarah J Mass usually writes her relationship developments now at this point this is the first Sarah J Mass book that I ever read so I know that she does not it did feel like a little insult not like really because it was like time and development but it compared to regular Sarah J Mass books it did feel a little insult lovey for Sarah J Mass so to me it makes sense that like it was supposed to be that way because she doesn't usually write her relationships that way. Like they have so much pining and stuff going on, you know? Okay. Oh, so then like Tamlin and Feyre kiss at the party and then Reese finds them and he kisses Feyre because he's like trying to save her from like thinking like if Amarantha came in and saw her or like, you know, she'd walk out with like pain all over, like she would punish Tamlin. So Reese kind of made like the lesser of do evil's choice and kiss Feyre and I was thinking it's sad this was like their first kiss um but like we also know that Reese had a little bit of ulterior motives because he because of the mating bond was like all a little, a little jealous and pissed off um so it's the scene's very interesting um and like you kind of see Reese cracking a little bit because like he's starting to reprimand Feyre for her stupidity and she's like what do you care and he's like what do I care and like you can tell that he has some sort of caring feeling towards her right because of this bond they feel drawn to one another and we know also under all like under it all Reese really does care but he has this you know thing that he's like trying not to care because that's the act okay so yeah this is the thing that like Reese is really driving Tamlin to insanity because Tamlin's really possessive so seeing Feyre with Reese like that is like Goading him. Farrah talks about when you killed my arm, you didn't need to bargain with me, blah blah blah. And Reese goes, I know. <laughs> the heart, I love. Okay. Let's see what other things. Okay, so let me have the whole thing about her like killing the fa fairies. And in the live show, it was brought up like usually in YA, like authors are like, oh, like my character is like above killing and will make the choice not to kill, which is fine, a totally valid choice, but it's a very interesting choice here that Feyre has to balance like the two innocent or three innocent lives in front of her and the innocent lives of like everyone in the kingdom and kind of make that really, really hard choice. And it's it what it's what ends up breaking Feyre so completely, like so mentally that she has so much PTSD when we start a court of mist and fury. Um, and it's just like sad and she kind of you know makes those decisions for Tamlin but also for the greater good um and, and this is one line in saving Tamlin I was to damn myself um and she just like basically talks about how she's completely fracturing herself having taken these innocent lives um and it's like and then she has to make the choice to kill Tamlin and then she's like well and Marantha wants Tamlin, so she wouldn't actually kill him. And then they're like, for someone, there's two lines where it says, for someone with a heart of stone. So then, like, the part of the curse that Feyre, like, they couldn't tell her was that Tamlin had a heart of stone. I think it could have been layered in there, like, a little bit more because heart of stone is such a common turn of phrase. I forgot that that was the twist. So I didn't pick up those on my second read around. And then I was like, I love you, I said, and stabbed him. Such a dramatic stabbing. And then when Feyre dies and like the person that's screaming out for Feyre is Reese and it's not Tamlin. And I think that just like says everything. Um, and then Reese, even though it's hopeless, like he just is trying and trying to like kill Amarantha no matter like if it's not hopeless to like stop Amarantha from hurting Feyre. And then the bond between them went taut and so like that's obviously the mating bond or like whatever beginning of the mating bond is um and then Feyre solves the, the riddle but then 
her spine is cracked and she's dead and then it goes into like I was far away but still seeing seeing through eyes that weren't mine eyes attached to a person who slowly rose in position on the cracked body floor and I think the tattoo is so clever because it makes the reader think that the tattoo is what is tethering Feyre to Reese but it's really the bond her soul is kind of like attached to Reese through the bond and then all the high lords come over and just give like a scrap of power to Feyre to bring her back to life and I do think it's very interesting I notice here that the high lord of the autumn court is the first one to do that um, and maybe it's because of some sort of thing between like, the autumn court and Tamlin and whatnot but like because usually in the next books the high lord of the autumn court is um, kind of like portrayed as like such an antagonist so it's interesting that he was the first one here so then she's brought back to life as a high fae and then the last thing that i want to talk about is the mating bond so she's awoken from sleep by something tugging at the middle and then uh, reese says she's like why did you do it and he's like because i didn't want you to fight alone or die alone and i cry like we're definitely still seeing like the sides of reese that he tries to hide in this hide in this book if you just like look hard enough you know okay and then there was a line, a high lord who loved to fly, trapped under a mountain. And then Reese says, be glad that you're human heart, Feyre. Pity those who don't feel anything at all. Okay, and then he bows at her. And then he like, is starting to vanish. And then he goes rigid. And then his eyes lock on hers. And his eyes go wide and his nostrils flare. And he looks like shocked and he stumbles and he disappears. And that's when the mating bond snaps into place for him. I just I love them so much. Oh my god. I'm literally like in my vlog for Aquamap, it's gonna be like two hours long just of me crying about Feyre and Reese. Literally. Okay, that's like all I wanted to say. And oh my god, when Aquamap, when I read that book, I'm just gonna be going through it. Like just expect mascara running down my face. It's gonna be a time. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this format of video. It was new to me to really do such an in-depth analysis as I was reading, but I truly enjoyed it because it's kind of very easy for me to break up my thoughts in the segments as I'm reading the book as opposed to like trying to go back later and organize a book talk. I think that this was a really fun way to do a book talk and a reading vlog style video. So please let me know what you think below. Um, and your thoughts on my thoughts if you watch the live show if you're excited for the rest of the series and i will definitely make sure to put in the description like to not watch this video if you've not read the entirety of the series because many many things were spoiled in my thoughts but yeah i just think this was really a good change of pace for me and a different type of video and i'm really glad that i did it and i'm having so so much fun with the avatar along and i'm just really excited that maddie and i have decided to start hosting this and i haven't posted a video in two weeks i just really wasn't in the reading mood but i feel like coming back especially with reading this book and i have some really exciting reading plans coming up and i'm going to be filming a tbr soon for november i didn't film one for october like i just feel like my reading mood is back and i'm excited about it so just look for exciting things for me in the future because i am planning some things in the background that i think are going to be really fun and exciting through the end of the year and that's all i can say for now so have a good night have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one